here's an interesting question for you. What does it mean to be an adult? Well, Stanford University's former dean of freshmen looks for the answers in her new book, Your Turn, How to Be an Adult. Julie lithgott Hames also offers advice for living what she calls a more authentic adulthood. Before we talk with her, we decided to ask some 20-somethings what they think it means to be an adult. There's a stereotype around what adults do. You have a job, you have a family, you have a house and kids. But I'm 21 and I have none of those things. I'm a grown-up and I take care of myself as much as I can. And to me, that's being an adult. I would say once I moved out on my own with my twin brother, taking those steps were just making sure I maintained my bills, stayed on top of my bills, and just making sure that I never had to rely on my parents anymore. I think I'm defining success these days as being happy or at least being content with myself and with my surroundings and having the freedom to make the choices that I've decided I need to make for myself, whatever that means. The steps that I took to get to where I am now, I don't know if I should call them steps. It felt like a slip and slide at one point. I felt like I was tumbling down the stairs. It feels like if I don't get that great job out of graduation, if I can't support myself, if I can't live on my own, if I can't like do all these things that adults are supposed to do, am I a failure? I think I have tangled with the idea of what it means to be an adult and what it means to be independent or what it means to be successful. And I'm realizing that that is not a really clear line. There are really no check boxes. It's just really understanding what is required of you to succeed in life or to just survive and, and choosing to do it. And Julie Lifka Hams, who is also a CBS News contributor, joins us now. Julie, good morning. Uh, I'm 64 and I'm still trying to answer this question, <laughs> what it means to be an adult. We heard, we heard all of those young folks uh, talking about what they think it means. How do you define it? First of all, those young people had it absolutely right. Thank you for opening the segment with their voices because it really is all about them. You know, the old definitions of adulting from the 18th and 19th and 20th century were finish school, get a job, leave home, marry, and have kids. And those definitions don't fit our new reality. Those definitions were gendered. They assumed everyone was hetero. Um, today, we have more choice and more freedom. For example, millennials and older Gen Zs, they're going to live to a hundred. So why stop your education at 22 if you're going to live that long? What hasn't changed is that humans still need to fend for themselves, pay their bills. But maybe you need to live at home today because the cost of living in your hometown is so expensive. You have high student loans that have uh, outpaced salaries and wages. Maybe you're going to go live with a set of friends, your chosen fam, where you're going to share and barter and co-create the community that feels right for you. So it doesn't really matter who you live with it matters how you live are you showing up in that environment as an adult are you taking care of your yeah. bills are you taking care of your mental health are you taking care of the people around you you say it's not a checklist it's a process what exactly do you mean well, the five definitions of adulthood were very much a checklist from the past. Today, we know it's a process. It's not about a lockstep plan or some kind of perfect set of steps you have to adhere to. It's about a mindset that says, hey, I'm going to try to figure stuff out. I want to be independent. I want to be self-reliant, but I'm learning. We have to reframe our mindset. Carol Dweck at Stanford, her research is on growth mindset. Let's get out of the fixed mindset that says, I'm perfect and reframe it to I'm trying to get better at this or reframe this is hard to I do hard things when we can be humble and appreciate that if we can bring a beginner's mindset to the process of adulting then we can lean into what I call life's beautiful F words failing floundering fumbling falling okay these are <laughs> yes. life's greatest yes. teachers yeah. if we can yeah. accept that feedback is probably the most important one if we can be humble in the face of these things, we can learn and grow. And that's the path to a meaningful, rewarding adulthood. Yeah, you called feedback in your book the ultimate growth uh, hormone. You said you said we should change I suck to I haven't learned to do this yet. <laughs> change this is hard to that's I right. do hard things. <laughs> but your book was interesting to me, Julie, yes. because you made a point of talking to all different kinds of adults, all different. You, you really seem to be going for inclusivity and diversity in this particular book in a way that I hadn't seen before. 
Absolutely, Gail. As a black and biracial and queer person, I am really aware that all lives should matter. So we as writers have to do the work to ensure that all the lives do matter on the page. So what I've done in this book is make sure my narrative is very inclusive of humans of all backgrounds, racially, ethnically, in terms of gender, sexual orientation, in terms of mental health status, in terms of their degree of education. I've brought close to three dozen other humans into these pages to tell the story of what adulting looks like. You know, I think in sharing the stories of so many people, folks are gonna learn like, wow, there are folks co from completely different walks of life who are nevertheless the, the same, same as thing. me. As yep. Maya Angelou said, right? We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. And that's one of the things I'm trying to demonstrate in these pages about adulting. Hey, Julie, your, your last book was called How to Raise an Adult. It was for parents. So I'm curious, <laughs> would you advise parents listening to buy this book for their adults to be? And if so, what do you hope those adults to be get out of it? Well, here's what I'm hearing. Some of my early readers have in fact been parent teen combos or parent 20 something combos. And the younger person, the 18, 20, 22 year old is apparently saying, oh, hey, mom, dad, parent, I wanna talk to you about what's on page so-and-so, okay? It's, it's appearing to be kind of an opportunity to push the door open for clearer communication, more authentic, honest communication um, that the young adult wants to have with their parent, which I think is fantastic. Fantastic. So for parents, read this and be humble. Take an yeah. interest in what your young adult children <laughs> might want to be telling you. Okay? Yes. I'm humble there every day. Julie Lifkot Ames. Thank you. Yes. yes. Julie Lifkot Ames, thank you so much. The book is Your Turn How to Be an Adult. It is on sale today.